Good day to everyone joining us and welcome to today's XTalks webinar. Today's talk is entitled Pharmaceutical Serialization, the challenges we as a CDMO are facing. Today's webinar is part one in a three-part webinar series titled Roots to Address the Real Challenges in Serialization. My name is Sarah and I'll be your XTalks host for today. Today's webinar will run for approximately 30 minutes, and this presentation includes a Q&A session with our speaker. This webinar is designed to be interactive, and webinars work best when you're involved, so please feel free to submit questions and comments for our speaker throughout the presentation using the questions chat box, and we'll try to attend to your questions during the Q&A session. This chat box is located in the control panel on the right-hand side of your screen. If you require any assistance, please contact me at any time by sending a message using this chat panel. At this time, all participants are in listen-only mode. Please note that this event will be recorded and made available for future download. Now I'd like to introduce our speaker for today's event. Christian Gross is the Manager of Packaging Technology and Project Manager Serialization at ASIC Pharmaceuticals. As part of his role as project manager, he has driven the implementation of serialization and aggregation at ASICA's facility in Germany. Christian has over 20 years experience in the pharmaceutical industry. He started his career as a packaging technologist at Swartz Pharma before joining ASICA in 2009 as head of packaging technology and artwork services. So without further ado, I'd like to hand the presentation over to our speaker. And Christian, you may start whenever you're ready. Thank you, Sarah, for introducing me. Good morning, good afternoon, to, uh, good evening to everyone in the session here. Welcome to my talk on pharmaceutical civilization, where we'll, I will be discussing how CDMOs are addressing some of the challenges facing the industry. Why we are talking about civilization, why it is important. At $200 billion annually, fake pharmaceutical drugs make up the largest global counterfeited market. Today, it is estimated that up to a third of the world's prescription drugs are counterfeited, but it is closer to two thirds in some developing countries. Of these drugs, more than a half are life saving drugs, for example, as treatments for malaria or tuberculosis. According to the Interpol, more than one billion people die each, each year from counterfeited, counterfeited fighted drugs. Global health authorities are trying to con con contract this problem by establishing deadlines for civilization mandates to support the identification of counterfeited medicines. Where we are in the industry, civilization legislation is already in place in countries like Turkey, Brazil, South Korea or China. It is coming in effective in the US in 2017 and it will be required for all prescription drugs in all EU countries by February 20, 2019. Different countries will have their own individual legislation and requirements, and pharmaceutical companies will need to meet the needs for all these, those that they operated in now, and prepared for the future legislation coming in, into effective. Across the industry, we're seeing a differing level of preparedness, depending on if the pharmaceutical company is already serving a particular country with legislation in place or not. Now, let me ask you now if you are prepared, uh, if you are prepared for civilization here. Great, so we've got a poll question for the audience today. And that question is, as Christian said, how prepared are you for serialization? 
Are you very prepared? Serialization solution is already in place. Prepared, so you're in the planning stage. Somewhat prepared or not prepared. So that question again is how prepared are you for serialization? Very prepared, prepared, somewhat prepared or not prepared. And it looks like the majority of the audience has voted. Uh, so we'll close the poll and we'll share those results later on in the presentation. Feel free to continue with your presentation, Christian. Okay. Since civilization is a complex process, uh, pharmaceutical companies may choose to outsource this capability. Either way, flexibility uh, and reliable civilization solutions are required that can be tailored to meet varying countries' legislation. During this presentation, I will discuss how CDMOs like ourselves are meeting this civilization challenge and give insight into our strategy. I will talk about one of our civilization projects and give you the details about the general requirements, scope and areas are involved. And finally, I will share your, our key learnings. How are ASICA meet, meeting the civilization cha challenge? As a contract development manufacturer partner for active pharmaceutical ingredients and finished dosage forms, we support our pharmaceutical customers meet their goals, including helping to ensure patient safety and helping to prevent fraud. It was extremely important to use to aim able to provide our customers with a civilization solution. Since 2009, we are invest, invested millions in civilization module that is flexible and scalable. This module can be adapted to meet varying country legislation. Our civilization capabilities Im, is implemented and fully operational across our business at all of our packaging sites. Our production lines first went live in Italy in 2013, so we have been doing civilization for about four years now. And we are one of the first CDMOs to have implemented civilization. This is our first serial number, which we have produced on the 15 April 2015 in Germany. From this date, we have supplied hundreds of serialized batches. Here you can see our machine out of uh, at our Monheim site in Germany in action. Before you start with civilization, you, ha you have to find the right strategy. At first you have asked yourself what are the risks. Is my product interesting for counterfeiters? Is my product already faked? or what are the sales volumes, in which countries I sell my product, not in any markets is the same risk, does my product have high margins, or I have high development or marketing costs. These are questions you have to ask yourself to find the right strategy. If you have answered all these questions, you have to find out a multi-layer approach, the right strategy. Every layer increase your safety. On the bottom, we have the product integrity. That means to protect your product against manipulation, uh, like temper evident labels or glute box. On the second layer, we have the product authenticity. That means to apply hidden or open features, like hologram labels, coin reactive ink, hidden micro dots or images. On the top, we have the product identification. There we are in the area of civilization and aggregation. Out of these options, each producer should tailor draw its combined strategy to make the life for the counterfeit fighters as hard as possible. There are a wide range of technical possibilities, ranging from very simple to high complexity from cost neutral to very cost, costly solution. This individual 
design options should be in conformity with the level of risk and the supply chain and distribution channels. Now we're coming to the project. The requirements for the project was to define at first where is the project located, centralized or decentralized, on the site or global. ASICA takes the decision that every site is responsible for his own project. Second, who will lead the project? Is it located at QA, supply chain or production? At ASICA was the lead in the production area with a dedicated production project leader. Furthermore, it is very important to have 100% support from your senior management. This project is linked to a high in invest and, it is, and if the project fails, it has a big impact on your and our business. The third criteria was technology. The impact on the lines should be so less as possible in terms of line speed, integration of temper evident, and space in the production. At least it is very important to build interdisciplinary disciplinary teams here in all areas. Resources must be ensured building a knowledge base in all areas. It's IT, production, planning, logistic, or quality, and at the end also packaging development. The goals for this project was to supply in the first wave South Korea, Argentina, and China with serialization and a full aggregation solution. The solution should be also future proof for new requirements like EU, US, or Brazil, or Saudi Arabia. It must be found a profitable solution and the service of the equipment and IT supplier must be assured. For our projects in Germany and Italy, we have fit many benchmarks. We installed seven lines equipped with serialization and offline aggregation in Germany, four lines equipped with serialization and online and offline aggregation in Italy. We have also installed a serialization database and implemented a connection to SAP. The timelines for the German project was from March 2014 with the start of defining the project scope until December 2016 to install the latest version of our serialization database. The second phase started in April last year with the implementation of the last remaining lines with serialization and for the main lines with a full automatic aggregation solution, ahead of this being a regulatory requirement. The scope of the project was to pack the product, apply the, apply the temper evident label, print and verify the code, store the serial numbers in our database, and send the data to our customer database. Out of the scope was the upload of the data to any authority database. Before we started, the project has to be analyzed, analyze our procedures. Then we have structured the existing flows and harmonized and improved the existing status. And then we implemented the additional process step of aggregation and serialization and defined a new process. Now we're coming to the implementation and realization of the project. At the bottom, we have our line components with our lines where we print and verify the codes where we have the temper evident label on the line. In the second level, we have the line managers. We have the local database for the, uh, for the serial numbers uh, and the control of the single devices on the lines. 
On the second level, we have the plant management system where we have our centralized database where we are storing all uh, serial numbers, the status of the serial numbers, good and bad numbers, and also we have the hierarchy of the aggregation levels here. And also the audit trail. And on the top, there we have the customer database, or it could be or any authority database. There we can offer a various range of uh, interfaces to any other databases. Here we see a typical flow uh, of a production order here uh, of a serialized product here. At the start, we create a production order with the information of batch number, expiry date. Also, we assigning the line where the product is produced. In the second step, the production order will be checked and released. After that, the production order will be sent to the uh, printing device on the pr production uh, line. There we print the data matrix and the human readable text. There we will check this uh, information and also apply the temper evident label. After we have finished the production, we will send all this data back into our uh, serial uh, number database, finalize this production step and release the next production step and provide all the information to our aggregation station. There we starting the aggregation of each single uh, shipper box and applying a SSCC label on this shipper box. After we have finalized this aggregation step on, step on the shipping box, we will send the data back in the, uh, in the serial number database and transfer the data data in our SAP system where we are performing the complete pallet aggregation here at the end. And that is our interface then to any other databases. That is a typical interface design with one, our, one, with one of our customers where we have on the left-hand side all affected system at ASICA and on the right hand side the customer systems. More details about the uh, integration aspect of our civilization capabilities you will get from my colleague Ralph in the next webinar in this, in this series on the 24th January next week. Here. For the machine concept it was for us, very important to have a small footprint with an integration of a line management functionality. Print and verification devices, a temper evident label, a possibility to apply further boolies or vignettes, and easy to operate. And finally, to have a high reliable support from our supplier. We made some key learnings from this case study. From the early stage planning phase, it was important to include all process related partners, building organization understanding and internal know how, and considering aggregation in, our, in the civilization solution. It is also important to make a pilot project since you need to install, qualify, and validated technology. technology. Uh, it is good to clearly define requirements from customers and interfaces. Also, add some extra time because integration of first machines takes, long, takes longer than expected. In conclusion, we think it is essential to have reliable support from our service provider. And you should implement it a solution that can go live as soon as it is ready for your current need, but can also be tailored with changing customer or industry needs. And now oh, we have the results of the survey available, I think. And I hand over to Sarah to present 
Yeah, we do have the results of the uh, poll question that everyone took earlier today. Uh, so that question again was, how prepared are you for serialization? 28% uh, of the audience said they're somewhat prepared. 32%, the majority of the audience said not prepared. Uh, and 20% said prepared, but they're in the planning stage with another 20% saying very prepared and that their serialization solution is already in place. All right, well, thank you very much for your insightful presentation, Christian. Uh, I'd now like to invite our audience to continue sending in their questions or comments uh, using that questions window for the Q&A portion of this webinar. And I have already received a few questions, so let's go ahead and get started with those. The first question today, which unexpected roadblocks did you meet and how did they impact timelines of implementation? Um, when we started this project, um, country regular, regular, regular three bodies were still filing their requirements and we so need to keep flexible, flexible in our project specification. Um, in addition, developing specific data interfaces for our customer is also time consuming here. Great, and have the processes which ASICA have implemented all been inspected by regulatory bodies? So for example, the FDA and the EMEA. Mm -hmm. um, so far, inspection of our solution have mainly been done by our customer audits. Um, but we expect there are be inspection by regulatory authorities in the future as different legislation come, come into place in the next years. There one more question. Oh, there is one more question. Yeah, are your existing serialization equipment and processes able to be adapted for US and EU legislations? And is more investment required and will you be ready for 2017 and February 2019 respectively? Uh, yes, uh, your serialization system is ready and meets all of the known requirements today. We have designed a system that can be adapted to work with different regulations requirements. Um, in fact, we have designed in flexibility, which we believe will enable us to easily support future requirements and also requirements that we, will, we believe our customer will want. For this, it would be very useful to have more knowledge about the customer interfaces here that will helps us a lot to learn about more of our customers. Well, thanks so much for those answers. We have now reached the end of the question and answer portion of this webinar. And if your question wasn't attended to during the Q&A session, the team from ASICA will do their best to follow up with you after the webinar. If you have further questions, please direct them to the email address now showing on your screen. And that's inquiries at asica-pharma.com. And this webinar was part one in a three-part webinar series. So please register for part two by following the link that I've sent to everyone through the chat box. Well, thank you everyone for participating in today's conference. You will be receiving a follow-up email from Xox with access to the recorded archive for this event. A survey window will be popping up on your screen and your participation is appreciated as it will help us to improve our webinars. Now please join us in thanking our speaker, Christian Gross. We hope you found this conference informative. Have a great day, everyone.